So the Radical Red video was controversial. You were my hero growing up. I watched all your movies. It's been half a year since that video was made, and a full year since it was filmed, and I would like to re-examine the way I look at and analyze ROM hacks and media as a whole. Nothing but the best content I can make for you guys. No more sappy shit, let's go fight God. Pokemon Voyager is a game that came out two years ago. Released by Ghoul Slash and Clemenops, the game has a surprisingly small following behind it, maybe one or two complete playthroughs on YouTube at all. I had to solve all the puzzles myself, it was pain. So I'm changing all that. A full puzzle guide will be included in this review, as well as, here we go again, 1. Graphics. This includes tile sets, Pokemon sprites, how fluffy the grass is, resolution, 2. Region design and story are deeply connected to one another in this hack, so so will their placement. 3. Custom content. New abilities, new moves, hell, they even got new held items. Uh, breeder ball anyone? Septic potion? 4. Anything to do with the Pokemon included. Fakemon, distribution, and a special something exclusive to this ROM hack. 5. Gym leaders and trainers. Self-explanatory, I think. 6. Special features. And oh baby, does this hack have those? And as always, so. And this time around, I want us to ask the devs for an interview. For funsies. Didn't really expect a response. Right into it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will shoot you. Welcome to the supercontinent of Keplara, where the region is on a precipice of an overpopulation crisis. Three main storylines here, the classic gym challenge, the region professor having you research a strange crystal we found, and the questionable Team Nova. They propose a solution to the planet's conundrum, that being looking to the stars to find a new home for humanity. There's just a little, uh, zesty in their methods. I can't really talk about them and their philosophy without spoiling the game, so towns and cities. They all have memorable names, which I'd argue is the most important thing right next to interesting geography. Space theme consistency is cute too. Serious Wharf, Point Vega. Mount Tavashtar? Apparently, some of these maps and routes were sketched more than a decade ago. It's kind of crazy. Early game fast travel exists, but it forces you to manage your money better since all these taxis make you pay a couple hundred up front. Fortunately, we get the fly TM about three hours in. Look, man, these prices are absurd. You gotta at least know- Oh no! Now, technically, this counts as region design, since in the lore of the game, other regions have either ceased to exist or the world of Kaplara has always been a supercontinent. Names like Alolan Raichu don't really make sense. So every variant Pokemon has an equivalent species name. Alolan Ninetales is referred to as a Nine Fluffs, for example. Generally, Kaplara is one of my favorite fan-made regions so far, and every part of it is engaging to go through from a region perspective. Despite the game being built on an Emerald decomp, the tile sets of the game are entirely imported from Fire Red. The only reason I can think of them doing this is because they really, really wanted those two animation frames for the Pokemon. Wow, dude, look, it's expanding. But they do have some custom statues and buildings, a nice classic choice for grass, and this one flower shop I made my phone background. Other 50% of the time, you'll be looking at back, back sprites, and me personally, not the biggest fan of Fakemon that aren't convergent evolutions or variant forms. A consolation, however, is if the sprite work is decent, and that we more than have. My favorites this time? Espatch, Mountigoom, Don't are sick as shit. And especially Falshear, love this little guy, here's some fan art. That and a whole mess of items will cover half designs I really like and want to throw up on screen, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. 8.5 out of 10 for graphics, hater of the concept or not, if you can't at least get something out of the effort, uh, I can honestly just Krill, say uh, a Krill, Krill issue. issue. Special feed. And welcome back to Advanced Gen Rock Hack B -b Bingo! Your host tonight. Me, tonight's contestant, Pokemon Voyager. Put your cards down, ladies. Let's let her roll. Does it have? 
documentation. Not only that, it has a wiki to points. Let's see here. Easier EV training, the berries and the vitamins scatter all over the place, and allocation to the next updates. One and a half. We're reaching the end here. Sideways stairs, you betcha. Wonder trading, character customization, randomizers. Yes, yes, yes. For zest and you're coming like you, and the ground running is based as. Pronouns. Up yours, woke moralists. A real game freak would never do this. It's pretty cool that they have this. I don't think I've ever seen personal customization in a ROM hack to this extent, uh. Ever. Like, cool designs aren't locked off by picking a boy or girl. Oh, but looks are purely surface level because of the charisma system. Almost every interaction you have in this game has three options. Positive, neutral, and negative. And if you're rude enough, the NPCs actively root for your downfall. It's pretty bare bones, but hey. It's there. There are tons of trainers that'll sell you things to fix your shitty Pokemon. <laughs> you will never be him. The guy that'll teach your Pokemon any move they can learn. Pretty awesome, to be fair. Jesus Christ, in an economy without meow farming? Hell, these people sell you ivy berries after a while. Swalled my gardening was for naught. Well, thanks, thanks for, for nothing, nothing, Whalmer. Pale. Other ways are more superficial, like a Pokeball changer, always gets me going, and a way to alter your Pokemon's freaking animation. Held items dropping after defeat, like at a certain point, you've already won this category. Again, a ton of customization from the moment the game's booted up. Their unique modes are fascinating, a uh, name challenge stands out, maybe I'll do that next time. Choose the letter X and then I'm stuck with six of this fucker. There's so much stuff, it's silly. Voyager, stop it, you're making Unbound feel underdressed. Remember what I said about configuring Pokemon? Gambling time! Welcome to Gunt Welcome to Andromeda Casino. Blackjack, Hold'em, betting on Pokemon fights. There's all kinds of new ways to hyper tailor a Pokemon. Now here's a fun tip, kids. The house never wins. It really is so funny that most relevant battle items are obtained exclusively through gambling. Most of your Pokemon's full potential is locked behind you needing a trigger finger and a biological disposition for addiction. For example, this hidden ability capsule. And wow, I realize there's a new way to use this Pokemon now. True, this happens every time a new gen comes out, but it's always fun to just go with what I've been given. No checking the wiki and just discovering cool interaction mechanics. A move that gets stronger the faster I get. I get faster every turn. I learned Protect, that was made for scoliosis here, and oh my god. A consistent physical electric move, with high base power. Is this a dream? I can't believe- it's a signature move. God damn it! The experience system, put here because it's utilized with the EXP share and EXP all items, dynamically deployed to adhere to your preferred playstyle. Said EXP all has four modes in of itself. I personally prefer skew mode, meaning bias towards the lower level Pokemon when distributing XP. In other words, if you're not a dunce, you'll never fall above or below the level curve. Transition. Holy smokes guys, we have a journal! Keeping track of every quest you've been given, as well as for certain story moments. Parallel to it, we have a full-blown achievement system! Holy, holy shit. How, how did they pull this off? Unique icons, bonuses for completing them sometimes, really satisfying pop-up, mm, mm, top marks, unequivocally, dude. Popping in again, trying to smash that like button and to subscribe. Win two, 40 times. For sex, harassment, and scrams. Before we talk about the Pokemans, we gotta talk about the Pokedex. Sure, this thing has way more tricks here, base stats, learn sets, better search functions, etc. But something you'll immediately notice from the moment your dad gives you your starter Pokemon to try out is that you don't know what these things are called. Hell, all Pokemon you encounter are a mystery to you, and that's maybe my favorite thing about this hack. The Pokedex actually mattering. Both in-game and in-lore, you won't know what any of this new shit is called, and let's be honest, nobody remembers what Moralul is called. You know Ash? When that Pokedex pops up to identify the Pokemon? That's cool as hell! And we got an excerpt here. I never cared about the Pokedex in any Pokemon playthrough. It hardly shows up unless you ask about it, and that's annoying to do. The way information is presented makes such a big difference. And I agree! Tied into the game's story, there's a part of the game where your Pokedex actually fails to identify a Pokemon. You think it's faulty, but upon introspection you realize, the Pokedex isn't complete. 
There's a whole slew of uncatalogued Pokemon out there. Truly an oh damn moment, if ever I've seen one. But of those Pokemon your brain hasn't catalogued, I mentioned them in the graphics section. They're sick as shit! Some leading towards the other meaning, but most of these I can't get enough of. Names are memorable too. Fotoguar? Zigligruff? Fallshear? That and more not fully realized sprites are improved sometimes, like Mirrorbird. And my grievances with Fakemon aside, I feel I couldn't put it better than developer Clemenops. A couple of times people have joined the Discord server and asked if we're going to make a version without all the Fakemon. That would be pretty disrespectful to the artists, but I think the question misunderstands what this project is trying to do, which is to be less of an emerald hack and be more of a generation 9.5 if you will, that happens to run on the GBA, a special feature. When encountering a Pokemon, you have the option to enable these little portraits so you know ahead of time if it's worth battling or catching, hell of a help with shiny hunting too. Honestly, playing this game was the break I really needed, the programming from predicting Gambit's terror type for 6 months. It was bliss being free from type changing Pokemon to instead be met with Type Essence. Yup, triple tired Pokemon. I don't use this mechanic much, but paired with the next thing? Oh boy. Ability Discs. Swap out your Pokemon's ability for one it usually doesn't learn. This sounds broken on paper, but fortunately most of these are pretty mundane. It's always fun to workshop weird mons you think are broken, only for you to overlook something and get swept by the A downer now, I feel there's a bit of a balancing issue with this game. The level cap itself is fine, but I'm not a big fan of gym leaders immediately having 6 Pokemon. The intention to encourage team building I understand, but at the same time, some people like to plan out and build out their team as they progress through the region. Apparently difficulty will be toned down in some way in the next release, so kudos to them for taking criticism well. And I'm not saying it was just a Krill issue, it could genuinely make early gym games frustrating. Gym leaders themselves are all attractive at least, and they all got their quirks to them. Oh goody, rotation battles. A terrain for each type? I'm sure this was tested thoroughly. Again, normal battles can more or less be configured to your liking, an in-battle summary of the field is brilliant, and oh yeah, puzzle guide time. It's almost impressive when the history of the region is slowly explored with interactions with its residents, how they feel towards certain events, how their society functions, that kind of stuff. Likewise, commitment to a space theming is extensive, ranging from the menu all the way to the goddamn PC wallpapers. As for future content, Mega Mechanics and Custom Megas are on the way. They've actually got a lot planned, battle facilities will be remade from the ground up, bug catching contests returning, sprites being updated, scripts are reaching their final drafts soon, you can just feel the passion. We both like to think we're pushing the boundaries of what a GBA hack is capable of, and that you are, my guys. Updates aren't as quick as I hoped they'd be, but frequent developer screenshots is always comforting. Also, goddamn PSA right now, stop harassing fan creators to make shit. This goes for Minecraft mods, ROM hack developers, help fan writers, it's a labor of passion. 
and nothing kills motivation faster than incessant whining for the next version. Sorry, I've been traversing CurseForge for a sort of upcoming project recently, and the 12 year olds are getting to me. Speaking of, it really is the little things that do it for me. The city maps that save my ass so many times, the extensive box and deck search functions, the goddamn wiki. All in all, already a pretty complete experience that ends pretty satisfactorily before the next major conflict. A level of polish usually only seen nearing the end of development, making this incomplete game not feel like that at all. Think of it as the update coming out an hour after I release this video. Goodbye for now, Pokemon Voyager. I will see you Tuesday. And thank you, dear viewer, for watching. Very ho 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 Christmas. And don't forget to sub- <laughs>